Hello, sports fans, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Inside Titan Sports. My name is Eric Kohler, and thanks for joining us. This week's show will give you a midseason update with our women's volleyball program, as well as catch up with our top ranked women's soccer team. But first, let's get started and talk some tennis with our very own head coach, Jerry Thor, and he's joined by star so sophomore sensation, Louisa Verone. Hello, Louisa. Hello. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks yeah. for making your first appearance on Inside Titan Sports. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. And, Coach, welcome back, bud. How are you? Hey, great. Thanks for having us. I'll tell you what, you got one of your stars right here on the women's tennis team. Uh, she's won two titles and two events. Talk about uh, the success of bringing her in. All of a sudden, bam, she's winning right now. Yeah, not bad adding an All-American to our program, and she sure has played like one. Uh, since she's gotten here, she's gone 15-0. and 0. Wow. So, 15-0 um, and 0 under me as her coach, right? <laughs> so... Uh, no, she's been great. She's come in, been a good veteran presence for mostly all freshman squad. And, uh, I mean, just played phenomenal this weekend against some of the top players in the nation. That's pretty good. Congratulations on Thank your you success. So now, you are a sophomore from Venezuela, but you also have some roots back to the country of Colombia. Tell yes. us a little bit about your background and making it to eastern Florida. Well, um, like last year I was in Oxeminole State, Oklahoma, and our junior college. So when I came here, it was like kind of different, the weather, like the people, the place, the where I live, how I live, everything. The weather in Oklahoma was so cold. I bet. So when I came here, it was like kind of the same weather as Venezuela. Right, right. So I feel more com like comfortable Feel here. like at home Like here. at home, yeah. And I have like a, lo a lot of Latin people. Okay. So I feel like more at home. Oh, uh, coach has been so nice to me. That's good. And the people that her, his wife too, like she helped me in everything because she taught, she speaks Spanish also. I'll be darned. So <laughs> she helped me in everything that I need help with the studies, like in tennis. I wasn't not confident when I came here because I was like, okay, I know junior college, let's start again, let's do it. But right now I'm pretty comfortable in everything that I'm doing. That's so, pretty good. Well, it's, it's lucky to have you. Now, Coach, how do you find a talented player like this to come play for Eastern Florida? Uh, yeah, actually, her coach reached out and said, you know, she was looking for a really good scholarship. And um, coming down to Florida is always an appeal for some of the top players. And um, so put me in touch with her. And, you know, we had a few Skype calls and messages back and forth. And she said this is the place she wants to come and win another championship. So uh, she won the Central Region Championship for Seminole State, Oklahoma last year wow. and came down and won the toughest region in the country here in Florida. Um, is is uh, you know quite an accomplishment for her. Well, this is a great show to showcase your talents now. You have qualified now for the Nationals. That's going to take place, I believe, in Surprise, Arizona? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that event that's coming up. What are the dates on that, Coach? So we'll leave October 11th and start competing. It's a three-day event, uh, top eight. Players in the country will be in the mix, and we're lucky to have Louisa take the court for Eastern Florida State. So, um, And she'll also be competing in doubles. Her doubles partner, Josephine Karcher, qualified as well by winning the doubles championship this past weekend. And so we're, we've got two entries on the women's side, and uh, we feel confident that they can make a run at a national championship. That's exciting. And Louisa, now after the Panther Invitational, Coach made the change to bring a new partner to doubles, and all of a sudden Synergy was right there instantaneously. First of all, Coach... What forced you to make that change? And after he says, I want to make sure, how does that synergy work for you? Coach, what, what prompted that change? They're both just phenomenal doubles players. I thought they, they could hit the shots we need them to hit. They're both really composed. Um, and I just thought we'd try it. I thought, let's, let's mix it up. We had good performances at the Panther Invitational. And we're really, really looking for some great performances. And I thought uh, we put them together in practice. I mean, I don't think they stopped smiling the entire time. So... Um, it was great to see. There's a great chemistry there. Um, I always say that good doubles teams, one plus one equals three. And nice. I think with uh, Josie and Louisa, one plus one equals five. So they showed that this weekend. I like that. Well, different math works because it works on the tennis courts. Now, how's your new partnership with your new doubles player that you're, it just worked all together right away? What's yeah, your thoughts on that? Like, when I came here, I was trying to see, like, a partner, like, speak Spanish. Right, So right. we can, like, connect really good. I try like so many, so like all my teammates. I play really good with them. Right. But when he t when he told me like, okay, let's try Josie, because okay, she's like really enthusiastic in the core. Like he can because I'm really like relaxing the core, like play so like easy. 
So she like she makes me more motivated, and she's like, "Okay, Luisa, let's go. It's my all the time." But when I play against her, I feel like she it was her first time playing doubles I'll here, playing regionals. So I have to give her more confidence because it was my second regionals. So he, she was like kind of like so nervous in the court, and she was like, "Okay, we need to win this. We need to win this. It's regionals. We're going to nationals." I was like, "Yeah, you need to get, you need to go with me. You need to like be my partner. Let's go." And she was like really motivated, and we kind of really good in the court. Like, like how he say, "We never stop smiling. We enjoy. We have fun." That's good. And you guys are like fire and yeah, ice. Yeah, yeah. We like. She's from Germany, so I. Like, our English is not really good. So Germans don't speak Spanish? So, no. So it's like, we kind of really good with English. Understand. Everything was perfect in the core. She plays really good, too. I played really good. So well, we that's made good. it. I think, I think that's a great uh, story. At the same token, when you go out to nationals now, how are you going to travel? You say it starts on the 13th. You're going to leave on the 11th. Are you flying? Are you driving? What's the deal there, Coach? And we're fortunate uh, as the champions of our region, the ITA foots the bill on airline tickets for wow. them. So they'll be flying them out to uh, Surprise, Arizona. Um, and we'll get in. There's a banquet. They get to get all dressed up. Nice. And, yeah, it's um, really good. And, and it's, a, it's an amazing event. It includes the D2, D3, and NAIA champions as well. So it's a big event of a lot of universities. Uh, they'll get a lot of exposure. You know, we've got some of the top talent that's going to be looking to move on, you know, her shortly. Um, and it's, it's a good event, and hopefully uh, we'll have them prepared and uh, can perform well. Well, that's good. That's the women's side. Now, what's going on on the men's side? What's the next event for the men's tennis team? Yeah, not much of a turnaround there. We finished the tournament with the women on Sunday, and we're at practice 6.30 a.m. with the men on Monday. So we're getting them ready to go up to Tifton, Georgia, to compete in the Southeast Region Championships, and they'll face some top competition there. Uh, ASA is three-time defending champ. They'll have a field of players. Um, ABEX participating in Oxford College of Emory. So we've got our work cut out for us, but the guys have been working hard for seven weeks. Um, a, a freshman group, so they won't have a veteran presence like Louisa here, yeah. but um, I think they're ready for the moment. So we're going to give it our best shot and see if a couple guys can get on the plane with us. Well, that's pretty good. Another thing is congratulations. You host an event for the first time in our college program's history. Tell us about that event just just took place. Yeah, we hosted the Florida Region Championships. It used to be held in San Lando Park in Orlando. And uh, in, in meeting with the ITA, they, they took notice of our brand new Titan Tennis Center. Um, it's an incredible facility. It has lights. It has all the amenities you need to host a top flight tournament. And they awarded us the bid. So um, it, was, it was nice to welcome five of the top ten teams in the state um, and in the nation to come compete here in Melbourne. And it uh, went off without a hitch. All the coaches were... We're really happy with uh, with our presentation. The players had a lot of fun, and uh, it worked out well that we brought home both titles. Well, congratulations. I think it showcased Eastern Florida Athletics as well, so congratulations on that. Good luck. Nice job on your first interview. You're doing great. Thank Keep you so doing much. that Spanish. But I tell you what, with your German counterpart, see if you guys can speak Spanish one time, and I'll come along. We'll have a little fun there. I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, teach them Spanish. Okay. Like all the German girls. And they're, really, they're doing really good. Well, I think it's good. Nice job in the interview. Coach, nice Thank job you. as always. We're going to come back and talk a little bit about our women's soccer team that's top ranked in the country. This is Inside Titan Sports. Stay right there. Eastern Florida State College. This is where you discover new opportunities, where you pursue your dreams, and careers take flight. Apply now for new bachelor and associate degree programs in business, healthcare, computer technology, and other growing fields. Eastern Florida, where titans rise. Apply today. Welcome back to Inside Titan Sports. Now time to switch gears and talk to our nationally ranked soccer team women's style. With that being said, welcome back the head coach, Jeff Carr. Hello, coach. How's it going, Eric? Doing fantastic. Listen, first of all, congratulations and kudos to you and your entire crew. You guys stay on top of the national rankings, both national rankings, the number one team in women's soccer. How does that make you feel? Uh, very fortunate that we're still number one the way we've played and then all the injuries and missing players. So, yeah, it's a testimony to the kids that uh, they're uh, finishing and, and their mentality that they get, they, you know, they got to finish out a game or we scored late in a couple games to win the games. But uh, 
Hasn't been the greatest performances, but we've got it done. Well, you've gone through a rash of injuries and some personal things off the field that have happened. And, and you know, obviously that is a great testament to you and your team to come together through that adversity. Talk a little bit about the mental toughness of your team overall. Well, to be honest, I'm not sure, you know, the how some of these young ladies have done what they've done with, uh, we've had a couple murders, we've had a death of a mother, we've had uh, one one teammate house was condemned and they demolished their house last weekend. So uh, their character is an example to me and how strong they are and how much they care for each other and they kind of, the distractions they leave off the field, which, you know, I'm not sure I can do that, you know, losing a mother and that. So, I mean, unbelievable group and the closest knit team I've ever had. Well, Coach, respect to you, though. You kind of take that father figure in some of these young ladies' lives as they come to the program, a top-ranked team. But now you kind of, like, you get involved of, like, hey, you want to shield them from some of these things that they're dealing with. Well, absolutely. I love these young ladies. I tell them that. Yeah, and I'm old, so I can. I am a father <laughs> figure, maybe a grandfather figure at that case. But, yeah. I'm not going to age you that much, Coach. Okay. But tremendous young ladies, and I'm very fortunate to be able to be say I'm their head coach, but I'm hopefully more than that to them because they are more than just players to me. They're special young ladies, and again, the adversity we've gone through in this short period of time and, and their character and how they've performed and, and just become closer to each other is, is unbelievable, and they've kind of came up with their own theme for the team as no weakness, So, um, and really there isn't these young ladies because of their character and their spirit for each other and for the game. Well, I tell you, coaching is so much more than just coaching on the field. So let's talk about and shed some light. You got your contingent of sophomores back. You got Bunny and Paula came back. Talk about their contributions and why it's so important to get those leaders back on the field. Oh, well, absolutely. You know, Bunny can play so many different positions against Dart, and she started at center back, and it was tied, and I pushed her forward, and she scores a goal, and then we push her back to uh, center back. And then uh, the game against Polk the other night, uh, she scored two goals and she played attack in midfield. And then Paula had four assists in that game. So huge, you know, just their example and the, right. and the tone they set on the field and off the field that uh, we're very fortunate to have them back. And what about De Silva and Darian Davis? They have 12 goals combined to this point. I mean, they're freshmen. What, what Talk about those two players. Well, Darian is actually a sophomore. She was a transfer from Florida Gulf Coast. So she's a sophomore, and there's lots of D1s looking at her after this year. Uh, she's probably one of the fastest girls I've ever seen. She has so much pace. She, so she adds a lot to the game. Uh, you know, we can send through balls to her, and she's going to chase them down, and she's going to finish. Well, Nathalie is just a really technical player that has all these different technical moves and different style of play than Darian, and so they complement each other. So, yeah, so Nathalie has seven goals and Darian has five, and they've been a huge reason we've been successful um, over these games we played because in the Darton game, uh, Darian had two goals and assists, and we won 3-2. Well, I'll tell you what. Talk about some of the players while you missed some of the contributors of family reasons and some of the rash injuries. What about some of the players that maybe don't hit the stat sheet that did their job next person up? Yeah, well, we have uh, uh, Sophia Carroll, a local girl. She stepped in to play holding midfield when Paula was out and did a, a very solid job. Jay Bales, who is one of our returning sophomores that's played in every game, unsung hero, kind of helps shore up our defense and sits in front of our two center backs. Uh, has done a great job. Our defense, we've had different players playing in there. Katie Jackson, who's been injured all year, just came back and started at center back because we lost Jamie Farrells for the year with a torn ACL. So... Yuna Sapan from Germany stepped up as well. So and Noreen and Kelsey are outside back. So we've had a lot of different players that stepped up and, and have given us uh, quality minutes and have really helped kind of keep us stable going through this tough time with injuries and other things that have happened off the field. So Katie Lockwood came back from an injury. She made her debut and also your goalkeep. Taylor Major, talk about those two players. Yeah, Taylor, we picked up late, and uh, she had to get cleared from different things uh, from doctors in Canada. So she started the first game against Darton and won that game and then had a clean sheet against Polk. So she's a huge addition to our team. And then Katie had been out for probably six or seven weeks and played in one scrimmage against Kaiser in the first 10 minutes, got injured with a pretty bad ankle injury. So she's back, and she adds depth and quality where she can play several positions from center back to holding mid to attacking mid to outside. So desperately needed those players back. Right. And, you know, on the, the dart game, we got four players back that hadn't played all year. So that was really exciting to get that back and has some depth. 
you know, speaking of depth, you actually had uh, someone that's looking at your depth. A University of Tennessee coach was on campus recently to look at some of your players. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, Brian Penske, uh, the head coach there, he used to be at Maryland, but he's done a great job at Maryland and moved to Tennessee four or five years ago. He's he's looking at several of our players, and Bunny's, you know, one of the, I think one of the ones he's really seriously looking at, and he really likes Nathalie and was looking at Darian and Paula as well. So, yeah, that's just huge exposure for the program. UCLA was here about three or four weeks ago. And we get calls all the time for these players. So it's just a testament of the type of player we're bringing in, but the quality of the young ladies we have as well. Um, so we're really excited about all the D1s and all the, the colleges recruiting our kids because that's part of my job is to move them on to the next level, the highest level that they can play at. So we're ecstatic for that. We well, do a nice job with that. Now, obviously, moving forward, you got three conference games remaining, and then you go in the middle of October, you go out to Wyoming. Talk a little bit about that trip and the three conference games, what we look forward to. Yeah, I mean, Daytona, two of those games are with Daytona, who I think is uh, very, very good for a first-year program. They beat Darton handily the other day. Um, they should be nationally ranked, and if they aren't this week, I think they definitely will be in the next week or two. Uh, they've done a tremendous job for a first-year program. So, And then we have Broward left as well, who we just barely beat down there in the 86-minute score. So... We got our hands full, and then we're going out to play Otero, who's out of Colorado, and Laramie up in Cheyenne, Wyoming, both top 10, 12 teams in the country. So we'll have our hands full. Plus, we're playing at elevation, and we're playing back-to-back -back days. So that'll be a challenge as well. So that's why we need this depth back. Well, I'll tell you what, speaking of which, how are you going to coach up elevation? I mean, that's just a really – Yeah, you can't. Coming from the sandbar of Florida and then going to Wyoming. Yeah, there's not as much oxygen up there. So, yeah, if we had these big budgets, we'd go uh, train at, okay. at elevation for weeks, but we can't do that. You can't do no. that at this point. Plus, maybe classes missed, too. That wouldn't be so good as well. But, I know, it's exciting, and it's, uh, you know, some of the girls have probably never – I think a couple of girls have never been on a plane before, well, so that's yep. kind of exciting. And some of them will be complaining because it'll be cold for them. Well, it's a different change, and that's good life experience. Absolutely. Now, absolutely. New, moving forward, your next game, I believe, is on Monday. It'll be televised at 6 o'clock against ASA College in Miami. What are you going to try to do to use that game and prep for your conference games? Uh, again, we we got to get better each and every day. Um, in every game, we got to, you know, our moving off the ball, our, our compactness, defending, our – our goal candy and our distribution of the ball. So there's lots of things every game we have to get better in every practice. So lots to work on. We haven't got to where we need to be yet to hopefully compete for a national championship. And we got lots of obstacles in our way. Well, Coach, you have our support. Good luck the rest of the way. You're always welcome on the show. Right. Thank you, Eric. That's Coach Carr. We'll be right back. You're locked in on Inside Titan Sports. Stay right there. Eastern Florida State College. This is where you discover new opportunities, where you pursue your dreams, and careers take flight. Apply now for new bachelor and associate degree programs in business, healthcare, computer technology, and other growing fields. Eastern Florida, where Titans rise. Apply today. Hey fans, welcome back to the show in our final segment. Let's switch gears and talk some volleyball action. We have the head coach of Titans Volleyball, Andrea Rasmussen. Hello there, Coach. Hi, how are you? Welcome back. Thank you. So, hey, you got 11 wins in your belt so far in the season, kind of halfway point of the season. Talk yep. about, so far, what you think about your team's progress at 11 wins. Well, we've done some really nice things in some matches, and then we've kind of defeated ourselves in some matches. So we're, we've shown that we're right there. Um, obviously, we're young. We have eight freshmen and nine new players to the program. So I think that, if anything, the first half of the season has been a learning option for us and an right. opportunity to kind of work things out and get things under our belt and figure things out. And then now, and heading into the second part of our season, I think we'll play with a little more confidence and a little more understanding of the level and what it takes to actually finish a match, and win a match. So what are your challenges with that when you have a lot of these new faces and stuff? You really only get to see these players for two years. How do you coach that up and coach through that? Well, it's difficult because we have three weeks to prepare from right. the first day of preseason to the first 
competitive match. So it's a, it's a lot of information in a short amount of time. So you do the best with the big things, uh, you know, like the bigger things, like the game speed and, you know, your op, like the way that you play the game and how you want them to perform and what you need to see from them. Right. We coach that up in the first three weeks and then we do our best to sustain for the first season. And then really the growth comes in the spring season when you have the opportunity to break things down and you have that extra time to work on individual skill development and, you know, swing analysis and different things that we do in the gym to change and improve their game. Well, I tell you what, volleyball is fast speed. I mean, you're watching the Olympics and I think it's a, it's a great game. So how do you coach up game speed when you have a smaller team this season? You're not as big as some of your opponents that come in. How do you make up for that size disadvantage? Well, we try to run a little bit faster. We try to move a little more speed. efficiently. Yeah, speed really outruns size. And, right. you know, the old adage of the bigger girls don't move quite as fast and right, right. in some cases really benefits us. <laughs> so we do. We try to take that to uh, use to our advantage. And we have, you know, one of our middle blockers is 5'8". Right. So she's not, you know, in stature. She doesn't bring a lot. She's not going to scare you across the net. But she's very athletic and she's got some springs in her legs. So She's very unassuming. You look at her and you don't think that much is going to happen. But she creates a presence on the floor and really does a nice job. Well, Coach, that's another thing, too. If you have that size disadvantage, you really have to have the quality of the set, per se, for the kill set. Yeah, it really it makes a difference. And we have oh, we have a phenomenal setter. Her name is Lujmila Bonfim from, from Brazil, and she's fantastic. She does an amazing job and can deliver a ball really wherever our hitters need it. And she sees the game very well. Um, as a sophomore, she lines up our hitters where the block on the other side isn't. And she does all of that on her own. She sees the game very well and is able to run a very efficient offense through her through her knowledge. So who are some of the players on your attack line that are, that are getting those kills? We have um, our freshman outside hitter from Auckland, New Zealand, Rachel Gunn, okay. uh, number seven. She does a really nice job. She hits the ball hard. That's her claim to fame. Right. Um, <laughs> but she does a really nice job. But we have a very efficient offense spread out. Malvis Ortiz, number one from Puerto Rico. She is on the right side, and she brings a lot to our offense. Um, we have two freshmen in the middle, um, Kylie Hurst and Jenna Barnack, and they do a great job. They're contributing five, six kills a match as well. So we have a balanced attack. It comes from all, all different positions. It comes from all different angles, which makes it really hard to defend against because you know, in years previous, we've had like one big outside hitter and one big middle and one big right side. So it makes the defense on the other side, it makes their job really easy knowing where the ball is going. This year, we're able to split the defense hit and make them, yeah, hit them from all angles. So it makes it a lot easier. Now, you have a really special libero. I do. Megan Grafey. Yeah. And she has 250 digs so far. That's pretty special. 4.72 percent. Talk about Megan. Yeah. She's a fantastic athlete above anything else she can do anything on the floor that you ask her to but she has an innate ability to find the ball and that's what makes her such a great libero she reads the reads the play very well reads the defense or the offense on the other side and sets up our defense she does her own thing she doesn't doesn't stick to the standards of this position goes to here and right. she kind of roams the floor and and obviously finds the ball quite a bit doing that well, that's a big part, too. The libero is such a big part of volleyball. It's kind of the heart of the team. Yeah, absolutely. And she, you know, she does a great job on serve-receive for us and gives us a consistent pass that we can use to run our offense. And, you know, it's where we've struggled a little bit with our size on our blocking. She is right in behind them to pick up the slack. And so she really makes the undersized offense work well for us. That's pretty good. Now, you got a conference game coming up this Saturday. Talk about that game that's coming up Saturday. Yeah, we have Broward at home on Saturday, and um, the first time that we played them, we beat them in three, but neither one of us played very well, so I know that we'll both be making some adjustments in this week going leading into the match, and I think it'll be a really good match. They have some talented athletes, um, so it'll be it'll be a good test for us after having a week off to, to see where we stand and kind of get ourselves back into the swing of things. Has this been a good time to kind of have your bye week, per se, having nine days off? 
What have you done during that time? Well, it's been it's been really nice. Like yesterday, we were able to work on some serve receive stuff in practice, and then we spent the last hour doing some team building stuff with minute to win it games. And that sounds fun. Kind of took a break from volleyball, and you know this is usually this the part in the season where girls are starting to get a little burned out right. and a little tired. The grind. Yeah, but it's also the time where you start to see a lot of injuries. So we're kind of using this week as a recovery period. So lighter workouts, um, a lot of just focusing on the little things, less impact, um, and hopefully we can use that to sustain our health through the end of the season. So trying to get into that uh, in the finals here in the tournament at the end of the season, what do you got to do getting those top three spots in the second season here? We're going to have to finish strongly. We, you know, we started out conference really well. We played Broward as our first conference match and won that and, and have proven through the next three matches with our conference teams, Indian River, Miami-Dade, and Palm Beach, that we can play with them. And we're just as good, if not better, than them in certain situations. But we've got to find a way to make that happen for not just one set, but for three or four or five, whatever it takes to to get out through the match with a win. So, you know, we're right there. And I think that having this time off and being able to work on a few things, I think that'll kind of give us the extra leg up to finish in the top three um, in the conference and put ourselves in a position to be to the state tournament. That's pretty. Let's talk about something fun. You're going up to Hickory, North Carolina. <laughs> a lot of people say Hickory. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're going up there in the middle part of, part of October. Talk yeah. about that uh, trip you're going up there. This is the first time that we've been out of state okay. this season. We went to South Carolina um, in the first week of, of August and really enjoyed just seeing some other teams you know, it's nice to play teams that you don't play every weekend. Um, so we're going up there when we'll play five matches on the weekend, but we're also taking um, an extra morning on the way home, and we're going to go to a park up there, the, a state park that's really close that's to Hickory. Do some hiking and some exploring yeah. and maybe some not 80-degree temperatures. There you go. Get away from the humidity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's good for the kids, too. Life experience can be uh, only done through travel. And Absolutely. I think it's great to get them some new flavors of life. Yeah, there's more to life than volleyball, Yeah, well, listen, unfortunately. I love your energy. <laughs> Appreciate all you do. Thank Enjoy you. some of the time off and get ready. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. And I appreciate it. And you're always welcome back on the show. Thanks for having me. That's the head coach, Andrew Rasmussen, of your volleyball team. And that is all the time we have for Inside Titan Sports. Catch us every week. And remember, anything and everything for Titan Athletics, visit us at efsctitans.com. On behalf of Rob Landers, I'm Eric Kohler saying so long. And remember, Eastern Florida, where Titans rise.